Welcome back to our lecture series, Math 1050, College Algebra for Students at Southern Utah University. As usual, I'll be your professor today, Dr. Andrew Misseldine. In lecture 26, we're going to begin a long journey about factoring polynomials. And we've done this for quadratic uh, polynomials already. Factoring them helped us solve uh, quadratic equations. And so we want to do this for higher degree polynomials as well. And so I should mention that the basic factoring techniques we've learned uh, from previous encounters apply. So whenever you're trying to factor uh, a polynomial, I guess the first thing I should mention, if you have a polynomial equation, just like quadratic equations, you're going to want to set uh, one side, typically the right-hand side, equal to zero. That's always the first step here. Set, we'll say the right-hand side equal to zero. And so for us, that means we'd subtract the 4x squared from both sides. So our equation x to the fourth equals 4x squared becomes x to the fourth minus 4x squared equals zero. So once the right-hand side is equal to zero, the, if we can factor the left-hand side, then we can apply the zero product property to help us solve this equation. And so that's what we're going to begin to factor at this moment. The first thing to do whenever you're factoring, I would say uh, the first thing to do is you're going to look for the GCD, the greatest common divisor. If you look at the coefficients, you have 1 versus a negative 4. 1 is the only thing common there. But when you look at the powers of x, you do have a x to the fourth and you have an x squared. When you're looking for the GCD of these exponents here, you're looking for the lowest power. You can't take more away than what the least member has right there. And so we can factor out an x squared in this situation. That's what our GCD is going to turn out to be. So factoring out the x squared, you would leave behind x squared minus 4 equals 0. Um, so we've taken out the GCD. We then want to factor x squared minus 4. Then we have to remember the previous factorization formulas we had before. Um, in particular, x squared minus 4, that's a difference of squares. We can factor that one as x minus 2 and x plus 2 equals 0. Then by the zero product property, we can set each and every one of these factors equal to zero. Setting the first factor equal to zero x squared would give us x equals zero. Uh, setting the second factor equal to zero x minus two, we'd get x is equal to two. And setting the third factor equal to zero, we'd get x plus two equals zero, that is x is negative two. And so we have three roots to this polynomial. Uh, notice that x squared is a repeated root. Its multiplicity would be two. The multiplicity of the other ones is one. So there is a consequence there, uh, but the solutions to this equation are 0, 2, and negative 2. I do want to mention that a temptation many people have in this situation is x to the fourth equals 4x squared. If you have this equation, the temptation many people have is actually not to factor out the GCD, but to divide by it. If you divide by x squared, you then end up with simplifying this thing, you'd be getting x squared equals 4. Taking the square root, you get x equals plus or minus 2, which agrees partially with our solution right here. We got the, pl the plus and minus 2, but where did the 0 go? Uh, the problem is when you divide by something like x squared, you're making an assumption. When you divide by x squared, you're saying x squared doesn't equal 0, which is actually one of the possibilities right here. If x squared equals 0, that tells us that x equals 0, giving us one of the roots here. So when you divide you're basically making the assumption that x squared doesn't equal zero. And you should be cautious about that. Whenever you divide, you're making an assumption that something's not equal to zero, which it very well could be, um, and it's part of the solution. So when it comes to working with polynomials, the solution process is to be is to factor it, not necessarily divide. Now, the two processes are very much the same. Um, I like to think of it as the, the difference between factoring and division as buying ice cream. When you go to the grocery store, um, there, this ice cream is typically sold in one of two ways. It's sold in a paper carton or it's sell, sold in like a plastic bucket. My local grocery store refers to these buckets as a party pail, which I think puts a nice image in our head, right? Um, I love to eat ice cream all the time. And so the difference here is that when you buy your ice cream in a paper carton, once you're done with the ice cream, mm, it was delicious, then you have this sticky paper carton that has no benefit. You, you can't really clean it out because it's paper. It would just fall apart. So you have no choice but to throw it away. So with the paper ice cream, you eat it and then throw it away. On the other hand, when you buy the party pail, it's made of plastic. Once you're done eating the ice cream, mm, the ice cream parts taste the same, 
But when you're done, you have this plastic bucket, which if you clean it out, you actually could use it to store lots of things. You could store beans in it. You could store rice. You could store marbles, whatever you want to put in a bucket. I don't care. I'm not judging. Um, I put rocks in them many times in my backyard as I'm trying to clean out, uh, clean out my yard and things like that. The thing is, once you've eaten the ice cream, there is still utility left when, uh, with, the, with the bucket itself. So what does this have to do with division versus factoring? So in either case, whether you're dividing or you're factoring, we recognize that x squared was common to both terms. The x to the fourth and the 4x squared both have an x squared involved there. And so we recognize we have to divide it out. The problem is with division, once you divide out the x squared, you throw it away. You're assuming x squared is not equal to zero. You have a paper card and you just throw it away when you're done. On the other hand, when we factored out the x squared, we don't throw it away when we're done. We recognize, oh, x to the fourth and 4x squared have that common divisor of x squared, but we don't throw away the cart when we're, old, when we're done with it. We take our party pail and we use it uh, to help us solve the problem. So factoring and division are basically the same thing. It's just when you divide, you throw the thing away at the end. With factoring, you keep it, uh, recognizing that it leads to part of the solution. So try to factor instead of dividing. But admittedly, the two processes have a very similar uh, calculation. Let's look at another example of a factoring technique that does show up. Uh, this one doesn't show up typically for quadratic polynomials, but it's a big deal for higher degree polynomials. Let's take this x cubed minus x squared minus 4x plus 4. Uh, it's already set equal to 0, so we don't have to move anything to the right-hand side. Um, and so the next thing to do is once you've done your, once you've done your GCD search, uh, which we look, x cubed, negative x squared, negative 4x plus 4. The only thing that's common to all four terms is positive 1. Uh, the next thing to do really is to look for some special factorization formulas, special factoring techniques. And so we've seen things like this before, the difference of squares, which we used in the previous example, a perfect square trinomial or uh, the perfect square trinomials we talked about before. Another factorization formula that we could use, it doesn't apply in this situation nonetheless though, is that if you have a difference of cubes, x minus a cubed, this, this would multiply out to b, oh, I'm sorry, I'm doing the wrong one. What I wanted to do was the following, sorry, I don't need to foil that thing out. I wanna take x cubed minus a cubed. If this, this thing will factor, as x minus a times x squared, whoops, sorry about that, x squared plus a plus a squared, like so. And so this is the difference of cubes factorization. It gets its name like the difference of squares because you have a perfect cube and a perfect cube right here, and a difference of cubes because, well, you're subtracting these things, x cubed minus a cubed. Now the factorization always looks like the following. It's kind of nice here, uh, and I did forget. It should be x squared plus ax plus a squared. Sorry about that again. Uh, so we have x minus a as the first factor. x minus a basically looks like the thing you started off with, but you forgot the cubes. So we forgot the cubes, that's the first factor. Then the second factor is gonna be an irreducible quadratic. It looks like x squared plus ax plus uh, a squared. Now this factor right here is gonna look like a perfect square trinomial with the one exception is that the difference between this and that is that the two is missing. So it's kind of funny because when it comes to factorization, many students don't remember the difference of cubes factorization. Honestly, I'd say put it on a note card or something uh, so you always have it on hand. But to remember the difference of cubes factorization, you're gonna forget the cubes, right? So we forget the cubes and you forget the two. So the way to remember is to forget. Forget the cubes, forget the two, and you get the difference of cubes right there. Um, also, there's a sum of cubes factorization, x cubed plus a cubed. This factors as kind of the same thing. You get x plus a, whoops, I forgot the cubes. And then you get x squared minus ax plus a squared. You forgot, you forgot the two again. Now the important thing here is that the signs on the linear factor and the quadratic factor need to be opposite. You have a plus minus versus a minus plus. That needs to be the case right there. And the sign where you forgot the cubes will match up with that one right there. So you have the sum and difference of cubes formula. That can be helpful in factoring cubic polynomials. Unfortunately, that doesn't apply in this situation because difference of cubes would only apply for binomials. Um, we have four terms there. And so the next factoring technique I'm gonna suggest here is actually our factoring by groups. 
uh, which we talked about this with our reverse factoring, uh, our reverse FOIL technique before. So what we're going to do is we're going to put these things into groups. So we have x cubed minus x squared in the first group, and we're going to have negative 4x plus, uh, plus 4 in the second group. Take out the GCD of the groups. The first one, you have a GCD of x squared, which we take out, leaving behind x minus 1. With the second group, we're going to take out a negative 4. Whenever this leading term is negative, always take out the negative sign. So we can see a common factor of 4, but we also have a negative sign. So take out a negative 4. That leaves behind x minus 1. The sign changes to equal 0. Then we check the thing that was left behind is actually equal. So we can factor out this common divisor of x minus 1, giving us x squared minus 4 times x minus 1. The x squared minus 4 is a difference of squares, so it factors a little bit more. We get x minus 2, uh, x plus 2, and x minus 1. And thus, setting each of these equal to 0, our solutions would be 2, negative 2, and 1. And so this illustrates some of the elementary factoring techniques. Uh, what we want to do in this lecture is also develop what's step 3. Right, we take out the GCDs, we look for special factoring techniques like uh, the, the, the factoring by groups or difference of cubes or things like that. When those don't work, then we resort to a more advanced factoring technique, which we will start be developing in the next video. Uh, take a look at it then.